Hey friends, it's Mrs. Herman, and today I would like to share with you for our lessons for the week of December 14th to December 18th. And the theme of today's uh, screencast is answering your questions. Because I'll tell you what, even though I don't teach you face to face, I have become made aware of some of the questions you have. And I'd like to use this opportunity to answer those questions because one of my jobs is to help you find the information that you need. Now, friends, uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to start off here with our Schoology page. This is sort of where we start everything because this is where I post the lessons that I do with you each week. But it's also a great place to start if you're just looking for other ways uh, to find information. First of all, this tab right here, um, you can ask me questions. Contact Mrs. Herman. Emailing me is probably the fastest, most direct way to get an answer to your question. And I do get student emails during the week and I do get parent emails during the week and I welcome them because I can answer them right away. I'm really good at corresponding with my, my students and my family because I know it's really important. If you've asked me a question, I know you want and need an answer. Now, next, friend, there are a couple things going on down here as well. Uh, hopefully, if you haven't already, you've had a chance to meet me. I created a little uh, video, which is a, a sort of silly. Um, but I do want to show you two other buttons. Now, most everything we do uh, launches from this button, and this is the elementary library resource page, which all your elementary schools have. The other one is my website, and that is different uh, the elementary library resource page is one which all of our schools share because all the librarians got together and agreed on the things we thought every school should offer their students when it comes to being your librarian. Mrs. Herman's website's a little different because Mrs. Herman's website belongs to me and this is something I created and I share with the families who are in the schools where I teach. So um, this year I teach in Defer, I teach Monteith, I teach Mare, and I teach all of 1GP virtual. So Mrs. Herman's library page is one that's specific to me but when you click right here on elementary library resources this is the page which is uh, across of the district the same whether you go to Ferry or you go to Mason or Richard or or to, to Kirby, any of our schools looks at this page. So first of all, friends, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, and I, if you're in my, my fourth and fifth, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, if you're my third grade and my fourth grade students, uh, last week's lessons, and I, I've got them right here, um, in my third grade, I had a set of questions I would like my third graders to answer. Similarly, friends, if you're in the fourth grade, uh, it says fourth grade right here, looking right here, it says fourth grade questions. And what I'd like to do is this is how I find out what you need to know and what you'd like to know. And so these are. this is really helpful. I can click on this fourth grade one right now. It's a survey, and uh, there are no right or wrong uh, uh, answers, and it doesn't ask you for your name. So when you answer the questions, uh, the only thing I do know is uh, which school you, you uh, is your, your home school, whether you're a virtual student or you're one GP vert, um, or you're a traditional student. So that's helpful to know which building. And by the way, I have to tell you. Guess which building has turned in the most surveys in third and fourth grade? You'll never guess. Defer. Defer wins both third and fourth grade. They have the most participation. And what I'm wondering is we can get maybe perhaps a little more participation from our students at the other schools. And that would be great. These questions are really just meant to find out what I can do to help you moving forward. I'm going to be your librarian and I'd like to make sure I am I'm helping you in the way that is uh you know, really necessary and needed. So that's that's just fun. It's a fun survey to do. So friends, let's keep on going. Uh, what were some of the questions that came up when those surveys were, were completed by the students who completed them? Um, and first of all, uh, one of the questions was, you know, are you watching the lessons? Well, friends, the cool thing about these lessons, number one, in addition to being very cool and pretty and rainbowy, is that they have the uh, week that they were recorded. So, um, and there's no time limit on any of these lessons. So if you see something here, these are called screencasts. If there's a question that you have and you notice that a week or two ago we talked about that, well, 
you can go back and listen to those at any time. This is a, a, a resource in so much that maybe I talked about Hoopla back in September, but maybe you want to learn about that now. And down here, I did my lesson on podcasts for kids. Maybe you learn about that now. Over here, I talked about, um, you know, I talked about curbside. That's helpful. A couple weeks ago, I did a lesson on National Geographic for kids, and that was really fun. So, if you see something on this page that interests you, by all means, go back and visit it. That's great. So friends, going from here, uh, a couple more things that came up in the questions that you answered. Um, one of the first ones was, um, how does pickup at Gross Point Public Library work? So the Gross Point Public Library, right now we have two library branches that are, are up and running, Central and Woods, and they are available. All you need to do is click on this button. You can click right here and it'll open up our public library uh, web page. And what you can do from here is a couple things. First of all, you can log in. And in order to request books be picked up at the public library, um, you do need to log in. And that means you need your library card and you're going to need to know your PIN number. And let me go ahead and demonstrate this. Now, when I press login, you will see right here that there's a series of numbers and then there's a series of numbers you can't see. The series of numbers you can't see are the last four digits of your phone number. In this case, it would be a grown-up's phone number and this is your library card number. So you do need your library card to be able to enter that in. Once I click on that, friends, and you do need both, the library card number and your PIN number, when you do that, it still looks the same, but look what happens when I click on my account. Account. This is really cool because sometimes I get families who ask me questions about what books they have checked out. Well, I want to show you what this looks like right now. So this is my account. You can see it says uh, my name right here and I, I use the central library. It's nice and close to my house. And then look what I have down here. These are the two books that I've got checked out and it answers some questions for me. It also tells me when those books are due. Those books are due on, on the uh, 28th of December. Now another thing I can do over here in addition to being told what books I have checked out because sometimes we don't remember right you can also renew them. So sometimes families say oh well Mrs. Herman would you renew those books for me and you know what that just means can I have this uh, for extra long and you know what friends you can do that. You can go into the computer, use your library card and your PIN number, click these boxes right here, and you can renew those books because you want to have them longer. No problem. Now, I will say the one hang up is if somebody is waiting for that book. If somebody is waiting for that book, the computer will tell you that you can't renew the book, in which case you need to make it a priority to finish that book. So the question is, Mrs. Herman, how do I check out books at the public library? Because the public library, the doors are closed. They will bring books out to you every day of the week, Monday through Monday. You can get books delivered to your car. But how do you tell them which books you want? Well, I'm glad you asked. All right, all we have to do is type in, perhaps you're looking for Raina Tegelmeyer books, and you say, well, I don't know which one I want, so I'm going to pull up all of the books that she's written. And when I do this, this is still not enough information. You can see the cover, you can see the name of the book, and you can see when the book was written. But let's say, for example, you want to have it, uh, you know, ready for your checkout. So I'm going to come back up here, and the one that I really want, let's say at this point, is this book. I'm going to click on the title. And this is what I need to see. All right, I'm going to see right now that there are two copies. This one's checked out. This one's in transit. That means it's moving from, from building to building. I can come up here and request it. And when I hit request, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm already logged in. That's why it says, okay, which, which library would you like to pick this up at? Now, I'm going to tell you what, friends. I'd like you to please have your books picked up at at the, the central branch or the woods branch. The reason why Ewald's not up there is because right now Ewald is under construction. But I'll tell you why I would like you to not have your books sent to your school. And I'll use Mare as an example. So friends, uh, Mare's, uh, Mare's curbside checkout is on Monday. And let's say you requested this book and this book got to Mare, but it got there on Tuesday. 
Well, friends, that doesn't really help you because if the book is waiting for you there on Tuesday, I'm not going to check out books again at Mare till the next week. And you'd be waiting an extra six or seven days. But if you request those books go to Central or to the Woods Library, and this is one of the reasons why they're listed first, um, is because then you can get that book any day of the week. Once that book gets delivered to Woods or gets delivered to Central, you'll get an email and you can indicate, oh, I'm going to go pick it up. And then you call them from the parking lot. And somebody said, well, Mrs. Herman, why do you have those schools listed then if you're not suggesting we have the books delivered there? I'll tell you why. Because teachers work there and the teachers have their books delivered to the schools. Many teachers right now, while we are learning virtually, many of us work in the schools every Every day just because it's a great place to work and everything we need is where it is. So friends, a lot of times our teachers will exercise that option so that they can have the books delivered to them at the schools where they're working. So moving forward, friends, that's how Gross Point Public Libraries check out. And by the way, one of my very smart students said, well, Mrs. Herman, how many books can we check out? And I said, well, <laughs> you'll be curious to know that you can check out as many books as your grown-up lets you. And what that means is you can check out as many books as the person who is with you is willing for you to take on. Remember that books are free to use, but they're not free to lose. The other day I looked up one of my students and my student had 30 library books at home. And you say, wow, okay, but that's a big responsibility right? When you agree to take 30 library books home, you're also agreeing to take care of them. And that is very important. So make sure that when you are requesting books that you go pick up with your grown-ups, you have that conversation with your grown-ups so they know just how many books you are requesting and, and agreeing to take care of. So how is this different from curbside checkout? Curbside checkout is very different. And I want to show you what curbside looks like. And curbside, um, right here, if you want to go to Mrs. Herman's website, this is curbside. The other thing you can do if you're here, you can click on my um, my. Uh, emoji right my little bitmoji here and uh, when you do that friends you're gonna see curbside now you can watch a video up here uh, where I answered a lot of questions I basically answered these questions about curbside and curbside has been going on for more than a month now and it is so much fun and I know not everybody has tried this and I, I've made it late enough in the afternoon I'm hoping you can try it um, and a, a few clarification points here first of all this is the schedule um, if we happen to have weather like rain or snow, I might have to move something to a Thursday. I've done that once already and it worked out really well. Um, I want to make sure you understand right here when it says Monday is I'm going to be at Mare. That doesn't mean just Mare kids can check out. Absolutely not. Anybody in the district can come check out. Anybody can come and check out at Mare. It doesn't matter if you're a preschooler or a middle schooler or a grandpa or you're a grown-up. It doesn't matter if you have kids who go to the private schools or kids that go to the public schools or kids who are in traditional or kids who are in virtual or maybe you go to Ferry or Mason or Richard or, or Kirby. Any of you can go to any of these buildings. I wanted you to know what days I'd be there. So on Monday, I set up curbside at Mayor. On Tuesday, I set up at Defer. And on Wednesday, I set up at Monteith. You and your family can come any day. It doesn't matter which school you go to. It doesn't matter if you're in virtual. And it doesn't matter if you're even in the public schools because all we need is somebody with uh, a library card in the, in the system. And you'll see, friends, I want to show you some silly pictures over here. Friends, if you watch this, this little slideshow down here, I put together some pictures of, of us checking books out to kids. In some cases, it's hallway checkout when we were in hybrid. In some cases, it's our curbside checkout. Now, never are students asked for their library cards. And we're very we're very intentional about that. We don't want you to have to bring a library card when you check out. All we need is your last name. All we need is your last name. You can come and check out books uh, that way. We have 
as many books out as we can possibly fit on those carts. Those carts are all we've got. So if the library has, in this case, four carts, I have all four carts out. If the library, in this case, has five carts, all five carts are out. And so, friends, I do my best to get all the carts out that we own in the library. And, and oftentimes, we're trying to showcase the collection that we have in that building. So it's a lot of fun. And, you know, we are using all the carts that we have. Now, I want to, to go back and talk about what happens when I don't have the books on the cart that you want. Well, that's obvious, friends, because first of all, I'm not going to have all the books. I, I can't read minds. I do my best. And remember, if the books are checked out by other students, that's also why I can't put the books on the cart because they haven't been brought back from the other kids who have checked them out. So friends, if you go to curbside checkout, you're going to be offered to check out four books. You can check out four books and you're going to get those books for about two weeks. And again, if at any time you have questions about what books you have checked out, you can go to the public library's website. You can log in. And when you do that, it'll tell you what books are checked out to that library card. And when I do that I can go over here to my checkouts I can see what books I have checked out I can see when they're due that's very helpful but if you ever go to curbside checkout and the books you want you really want are not there that's okay then you go to the public library and you say fine I'm going to look up that book because it wasn't in the uh, it wasn't at curbside so friends that's a, a couple questions that I know students were asking. Now, I did, one of my students said, Mrs. Herman, on your webpage, you used to have the memes, and I want to see the memes again. Well, this is me answering that request. So I put over here at the very bottom, all right, friends, these are the memes that I sometimes had playing when you would come up to the library. And it's fun because they're all library related, and they all have a message that I think is worth exploring. And so I do have these memes here because I like very much when kids think about the library and they think about information and they think about books. And so it's a lot of fun. And I did put that on my website because a couple of you said, Mrs. Herman, where are the memes? So those are there. Now, a couple of you said, Mrs. Herman, where are the puzzles? Well, if you recall at the beginning of the year, I had some puzzles on the front page of my website. Here's the problem. The puzzles cost money. And you guys finish the puzzles the same day I put them on my webpage. So if you could imagine finishing something the same day your family bought it. So imagine your grown-up bought a box of cereal and you took it up to your room and you finished it that day. Now, that box of cereal was meant to be somebody's breakfast, but you ate it up already. I'm in the similar predicament. Like when I put those puzzles on the front page, those um, uh, all of a sudden they were done in one day and I was like, oh, wait a minute, that puzzle was meant to last for a while and it costs money. So the question is, where can I get puzzles? Well, that's no problem. Let me show you a great place, friends, where you can find puzzles because I'm here to help. First of all, when we're on our library homepage, always click this button. It says if you're working from home, and we all are, make sure that you let the computer know that you're working from home. Now, when I scroll down, I'm going to show you a great place for puzzles, and that's here on World Book. And some of you are nodding your head going, yep, Mrs. Herman, I know about the puzzles. We're going to come over here to this silly birthday balloon. Why did they pick a birthday balloon? I don't know. They didn't ask me. But when I go over here, check it out. Friends, there are puzzles. Look at this. It says games. And yeah, they're a little puzzle, the little puzzle icon that's right there. So obviously, this is one of my favorite places to launch my questions about anything. And, and I, you can also play games. So look what happens. Hey, puzzles. So you can also play multiple choice games, matching, sorting, and crossword. If I go to puzzles right here, you can go ahead and click on a button. Now I realize these are going to be different than the puzzles I had on my homepage, but these are also free. So when I click I'm ready to play, it's going to time you and you can start to move those puzzle pieces into place and solve the puzzle. Oh, that doesn't go there. And you're gonna solve this puzzle uh, one step at a time. And friends, it may, you may say, Mrs. Herman, that looks really easy. But you know what? I think you're gonna be working at this for a little while. And so what I'm gonna recommend you do, friends, is give this uh, puzzle a little try on World Book. So there is my, my solution to that. Now, 
friends, another thing a uh, couple kids asked me was about Hoopla. And you asked me about a Hoopla and said, Mrs. Herman, I can't check out from Hoopla because it costs money. Actually, friends, Hoopla does not cost money. If we go back to my homepage, I'm going to come down here to audiobooks and ebooks because Hoopla is is a, a, a it's a resource provided for us by the public library. It is audiobooks, ebooks, TV, movie, and music. And I'll tell you what what might have caused you some trouble. First of all, this is a subscription service provided by the public library. It is not the school's program. It is the public library's program. Um, number one, most important, when you are here searching, you do need to have the kid, the kid search on to make sure that we're keeping those searches all appropriate. And friends, um, you can, uh, here's, here's the, the challenge. If you get an error message, when we log in the first time, you need your, you're going to need an email that you can use, uh, and then you're going to need your library card. Now, if you have $5 worth of fines on your library card, you would then be stopped at this point. And I will tell you, that's how the public library makes sure that you don't have a lot of fines on your library card. And they will stop anybody. And they, including, they stopped me. I had a library book I was using, and it was a mayor book, and I'm the mayor librarian. And it's kind of silly because I forgot to renew it. And I'll tell you what, my I forgot to renew it, and it was the weekend, and we I wanted an audiobook for us to, uh, we were going to drive to Ann Arbor, and it was an hour drive, and I wanted to have something to listen to. I went to go ahead and check out something on Hoopla, and it said there was a, a problem with my, with my account, and I took my... I went all the way to the public library and I said, hi, I'm a public, I'm one of the school librarians and I wanted to check something out in Hoopla and it won't let me. And they said, well, ma'am, you have an overdue book that has uh, been overdue long enough that you owe money on it. And I, at the time, you know, you know, I said, no, wait a minute, that's, that's the library book that belongs to my school. I'm a school librarian. I'm at Mare. It's a Mare book. And they said, ma'am, there's nothing I can do until you turn that book in. I didn't technically owe money. They just wanted the book back because the book was overdue. So friends, if that's the problem, let me know. Um, I cannot make these overdues go away, but I can help you understand why perhaps Hoopla is an issue. Because if you have books that are really overdue, our assumption is you've lost them and we would like you to replace them. And this does go back to a question I had at curbside the other day. Mrs. Herman, we lost a library book. What should we do? Well, friends, what we would like you to do is enable us to buy a replacement because those books belong to the library. So if you lose a book that belongs to the library, what we would like to do is replace it. Um, we don't have a, a pot of money that we can just, uh, you know, dip into every time a book gets lost. We are going to ask that when somebody loses it, that they take responsibility for it. So um, that being said, uh, I want to make sure that you understand Hoopla is free. One of my students said, well, I don't have money for Hoopla. And I said, well, no, it, it, they just want to make sure that if you've checked out books that, uh, that you know, you turn them in in a timely fashion. Again, you can always find out when those books are due because you can pull up your account right here and see when those books are due. So I'm hoping that some of your questions were answered. You know, friends, it is hard when I don't see you every day to be able to answer your questions that you might have. Uh, and that's why I encourage you at any time, if you'd like to ask me a question, you can either click on my email that's right here. The other thing you can do is also click over here where it says contact Mrs. Herman. And, and please, by all means, reach out and ask your question because I want to be able to help you. That's my job. Take care. Have a great week. Bye, you guys.